Hey, I'm Parker. I'm gonna show you how to make a really simple utility leather belt. Nothing fancy here. Just a single layer of leather and mostly just basic tools to make this. Let me show you what you'll need. First, you'll need some leather, something around eight to 10 ounces in weight or about three to four millimeters in thickness. You can use any buckle you want, but for this one, I'm gonna use an inch and a half wide muted nickel roller buckle. I'm gonna use some double cap rivets in the same finish. And all you need for that is a hand setter and some of these leather loop staples. They're just like a regular staple, but heavy duty. These strap end punches are optional. Also, an inch and a half oblong hole punch is really useful. A scratch all, definitely. You'll need a hole punch. I love these ones because they're adjustable. And of course, you can't make a belt without the strap cutter. This is a given. These simple wood ones with the replaceable blades have always been my favorite. And then you're gonna need a knife. And it doesn't have to be this one. This is usually my go-to, but anything with a longer, straighter edge is gonna be more beneficial because you're gonna have to cut a big, long, straight edge on the edge of your hide. And the straighter, longer of a blade you have, the better. These round knives are also really good for this kind of cut because it has such a large cutting area. If you don't have any knives like this, you can always just use a regular utility box cutter kind of thing. There are a few different ways you can buy leather. If you're making belts, you can just buy pre-cut straps, which is pretty nice. You can also buy just the back section of the hide, which is really the best part for belts anyway. But if you're gonna buy it in a full side like this, you need to know where to cut it from. I like to avoid the belly if I can when I'm making belts because it's lower grain. It usually doesn't look as good. It's kind of wrinkly down there. The best part to take it is from the back and the shoulders up here. But the first thing we have to do is get a perfectly straight edge. So roll your leather out on a big flat space. If you don't have a four by eight workbench like this, then you can just do it on the ground, but make sure you have a cuttable surface underneath it, like carpet or a cutting mat that you can kind of move along as you cut. I have a big, long, uh, straight edge like this, but you can use anything that's long enough and straight enough to mark it. Like a, this is a big level that I have that would work as well. But before I'm gonna cut anything, I'm gonna lay the straight edge down first and use my scratch awl to make a mark where I'm gonna cut. By the way, usually you're not gonna need a strap that's any longer than about 60 inches, which comes to you know about right here. So I'm just gonna make a cut right at about there just to make the leather a little more manageable to work with. I prefer not to use a straight edge while I'm cutting. Even with a cork back, it tends to slip around too much. I usually just like to eyeball the line that I made and take it slow. Okay, if you're not perfectly happy with that edge, don't stress it too much, because I'm gonna show you how we can fix it with this. But first I wanna explain what this is and how to use it. To put it simply, it helps you cut straps. Without this, you'd have to try and set up your straight edge again and make another long straight cut and just hope that they end up parallel and not wonky. So this just makes life so much easier, a lot faster. So there's a little tiny flat blade jammed into the wood in there with these set screws holding it in place. There's a ruler right here that lets you set the width that right now it's set at about an inch and a half. You can also loosen those up and spread these two pieces apart if your leather's really thick. And this top one is the one that you use to loosen up and change the width of the strap. I always keep a set of pliers like this around when I'm using this because you gotta really crank that down tight on heavy leather like this or else it'll start sliding or moving. This is only the second one that I've owned in my 12 year career and I haven't stripped one yet. So this does the trick. So you're gonna hold this, keeping this edge right here clear of your fingers or anything because that's where the leather's gonna run up and that straight edge is what helps you keep it going parallel and straight with the edge that you cut. And then you just drag it along and make the cut. The trick that I wanted to show you is that if you set it just at about a quarter of an inch, then we can just cut a small quarter of an inch strap off of the straight edge that we made. And that way any of the areas where your mark showed through or the knife kind of jumped off the edge or maybe it just got a little wonky, this will help us get a little bit of a straighter cut and just a better place to start. So now I'm gonna adjust it to an inch and a half and make the cut for my belt. All right, since my full strap is about 60 inches long and I'm not gonna need any more than like 45, I'm going to cut a little piece off the end here to use for my belt loop. A belt loop for a one and a half inch strap 
of heavier duty leather like this should be around four and a half inches. I'm just gonna cut five just to be sure we have some room. So I don't want my belt loop to be an inch and a half wide, so I'm gonna cut it down to three quarters of an inch. That's just how I like it looks wise. You can obviously do whatever you want, a more narrow half inch or, or wider like an inch, but three quarters of an inch is the look I like. Then I'm gonna get a second layer of this leather so that I can get a good idea of how the fit needs to be. I'll wrap it around and, and I'm gonna make a mark right at about where it overlaps. And I'm gonna do it pretty snug because leather stretches over time and I just like a more snug fit. So I'll cut this down to size and we got our belt loop. This is where the staples come into play. There's quite a few options you can do to make a belt loop. You can poke two holes on each end and stitch an X in there and that does a pretty good trick. It just takes a little longer. You can do regular staples or you can do these heavy duty weaver ones that I'm gonna use on my foot press. These staples can be put in by hand as well so don't think that you have to have the press but I'm gonna use it today just because it works so much better than doing it by hand and it's quicker just for the sake of time. Put it in the bit up top, wrap it around. I'm gonna put two in. There we go. All right, we need to make the end of this strap look nice and tidy, give it kind of a finished professional look. I like to add a round shape. I use this inch and a half round punch, but you could also just take your knife if you don't have a punch and just add whatever shape to it you want. You could just clip the corners, you could go round. I'm gonna punch mine. All right, in order to figure out where your rivet holes and the tongue hole is gonna go, fold the end over around the belt loop. And obviously it goes without saying, you can do this however you want. You could put two rivets here and one here. You could just do a stitch across both sides. You can mix it up however you want. You don't need me to tell you that, but I'm gonna fold it over and leave just enough room for one rivet here and one here. And then the buckle tongue hole will be right here on the end. I think I could shorten it up a little bit. So I'll put a rivet there and a rivet there, which means I'm gonna make the center of the oblong hole punch right at the top and in the center of this fold. That'll give me an idea of where to put it. I'm gonna punch the awl all the way through so that it makes a mark on the other side as well. Punch a number three hole. All right, then I'm gonna take my oblong hole punch here, inch and a half wide, and put it right in the center of the hole that I made on top of the fold. If you don't have this punch, you can make two hole punches on each end and then connect it with a straight blade in the middle. All right, now we can start putting it together. All right, I'm gonna slide the buckle on and make sure that the tongue is facing the right way. Now let's get into rivets. I really need to do a whole video about these because these nine millimeter double cap rivets are probably my most used piece of hardware. They're really versatile, I use them for everything. The kicker is if you're working with really heavy duty leather, you might need a slightly longer post like the nine millimeter cap with the 12 millimeter post. This is the one that has a nine millimeter cap and a nine millimeter post. It's the one I use the most and I keep it on hand all the time, but it helps to have the longer posts around as well. But for this case, a couple layers of eight to 10 ounce belt leather, the nine millimeter post is gonna be perfect. The way you decide what length of post to use is when you put it through, you wanna have at least like an eighth of an inch of that rivet sticking out the top, just a little bit. If it's too much, then it's gonna go in sideways, get crooked and you're gonna have to break it off or drill it out or it's gonna be a nightmare. But if it's sticking out just a little bit, you're in good shape. We'll pop the cap on. Use this little anvil here, and I'm gonna use a hand setter and a mallet. Nailed it. So we'll slide our belt loop up and do the second rivet. You can also use the hand press, but sometimes for stuff like this, it's just easier to use the, the hand setter. Buckle side of our belt, all done. All right, here's the part where we measure it out. All right, let's talk about measuring the belt. If you have an old belt that you can go off of, that's the perfect scenario. If you're trying to take orders online and you don't necessarily have a customer's old belt to go off of, 
uh, it can get a little bit harder. There's a lot of communication involved with belt ordering. So if you have an old belt to go off of, <laughs> oh yeah, look at that, it's basically the same belt. I made this one years ago and I'm realizing just now that it's made almost exactly the same. All right, the way you're gonna take the measurement is start at the point where the tongue meets the inside edge of the buckle and then go all the way down to your favorite hole or the one that gets used the most. Ideally, it would be in the middle. Um, so on the new one, we're gonna make it in the middle. In this case, it was as tight as it could go. So uh, I'm gonna take that measurement, see where we're at, and then uh, apply it to our new belt. So based off the old belt, it measures right at 40 inches. I've noticed that in general, that measurement is usually about four inches bigger than whatever your normal pant size is. So like in terms of Levi's sizing, I usually order a size 36. So it makes sense that it's measuring right at 40 inches because it's four inches bigger than my pant size. Now my pops is here. So a few minutes ago, I had him come in and I measured his as well just to see if that was consistent and uh, it was right on the money, four inches larger than his pant size. So if you're taking an order online or over an email or DM or whatever, and you know their Levi's pant size, you could be pretty dang close by adding four inches to that and measuring the belt out to that. Otherwise, go with the old belt measurement. If you don't have an old belt to go off of, just use one of those flexible tape measures. All right, I'm gonna mark out my 40 inches. 38, 39, 40. Make my mark just by eyeballing it there in the center of the strap. And then from that point, I'm gonna make three holes on either side of it at one inch increments. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then I'm also gonna make a mark four inches away from the last hole. So we'll go one, two, three, four. And that's where the end of my belt is gonna be. So I'll take my strap end punch and make a nice punch right there. Punch out my holes and we're just about done. This time I'm gonna use the English point just cause that's the look that I like. Now let's punch our holes. All right, for the tongue holes, I like to put it at a five, but depending on your buckle, that might be different. All right, don't cut away yet. I put out a poll on the YouTube community post asking people what they wanted to learn from a belt video. And it was very mixed between beginner stuff and more advanced stuff. So this is a simple beginner type video. And I'm gonna be filming another one, which when it's finished, I'll link it up here. And it'll be a more advanced belt video with stitching, maybe some tooling or stamping, but definitely some edge treatment, edge dyeing, burnishing, all that good juicy stuff. All the links I could possibly come up with for tools and materials are gonna be down in the description. So thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one.